I'm going to close that up. All right. Hold on, they're setting it up. One moment, please hold. And now we're live. Close that up. And goodbye. Hello. All right, now I'm here. All right, people. Wait, let me see the chat. Welcome. Come on in. Hi, London. Tell me where you're coming in from. From Latvia. Amazing. I love it. California. Hey, Joyce. Hey, Trace. Hey, everybody. Nigeria, Dubai. Welcome. My friend Erica lives in Dubai. India, Kansas City, Sweden, Germany, Pennsylvania. Wow, 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 wow. Hello. The Netherlands. How are you? Nova Scotia, Arizona. I wonder if any of the ladies from my mastermind are here. Welcome, Bend, Oregon, Argentina, Florida, Cozumel. Very nice. Mexico, Massachusetts is here. Officially, let me officially welcome you to session two of Boundary Palooza. This is all about, it's called Emotional Boundaries, The Struggle is Real. Why is that? Because it is. I'm so excited that you guys are here with me. Texas, England, everyone's in the house, right? So in the chat, first of all, make sure that your chat is set to everyone. So there's a little drop down menu. It says host and panelists, and then everyone, make sure it's to everyone so that we can all see what we're saying. As you guys know, I'm very interactive when teaching. So I love to, uh, I love to see what you guys have to say, but if you guys are only talking to me, I'm the only person and Team TC, we're the only ones who can see it. So make sure it says everyone. If you have questions like we did yesterday, for those of you that were here, we're gonna be hitting those at the end. You wanna put a couple of question marks in front of your question so that Team TC can grab it and drop it on my document so I can actually see it. Welcome. Some, oh, Venice, that's exciting. All right, Florida's in the house. Yay. I'm so excited you guys are here. And you know, you guys, you're really walking your talk because I cannot tell you the number of people who say to me, I really want to do this. I really want to learn. Then I do a bunch of free stuff, but then they don't show up or they say they're going to watch it later, but they actually don't. So for those of you who've managed to get it on your schedule and you're actually here live, I so appreciate you. I never feel entitled to your time per se, because without you, there is no me, at least not in this incarnation, because truthfully, everything I do is with you in my mind and in my heart. With the ever loving prayer that whatever you learn will lessen your suffering and increase your joy. You know, you guys know this, those of you who've been with me for a while, you're it for me. You're, you're literally it. You're why I do it. So I love that you we're gathering right now virtually and that you're with me. It makes me so happy. And I will also acknowledge those of you who are actually watching this after the fact, right? Because again, how many things do you sign up for and don't? We just don't do it. We're like, oh, maybe I'll get it by osmosis because it's I downloaded it. You're not going to. And many of you have very good reasons for not being able to be here live. So uh, props to you for actually watching it after the fact and carving out time for yourself, right? This is all about you. The better you are when it comes to boundaries, the better your relationships are, the better your career is, the better your family is, all of it. It is all connected. As we know, disordered boundaries are super disruptive which is why I'm doing this, which is why after this, we start Boundary Bootcamp, the course itself that starts on May 24th. Um, but yeah, we have much more Boundary Palooza to go. I'm going to also be going live over the weekend. Like, you know how it is, you guys, just the week before the course starts, I just do a ton of free stuff um, because hopefully I'm wetting your appetite, right? I want you to want to transform your relationship to boundaries so badly. I wrote a whole freaking book about it. Anyway, so thank you, thank you, thank you. Turn off your distractions. Don't have like 70 things open right now. Can you do me a favor? And really give yourself the gift of your own presence and give yourself the gift of like the luxury of learning. How much of the time are we just like burning through the day as my friend David G would say, 
you know, dropping, getting up and doing it all over again. And hopefully this is a pattern interruption, this training for you. And tell me, how many of you were here yesterday? Just say me, if you were here yesterday. Yeah. Very exciting. How many of you, today is the first day that you're attending live? Just write today or a T for today. Because that's exciting too. Yes. All right. Woo but you didn't miss yesterday. Don't worry. You know, as long as you're signed up, you have access to the replay from yesterday. Um, and you've read my book. Thank you, Nikki. I appreciate that. Yes, Don. a lot of people, you got good reasons to not be here yesterday, but please watch the replay because it was great. You know, and you're right on time, Shelly. You're right on time because here you are today. So what is Boundary Palooza? If you happen to be new, it's a three workshop series over three days designed to raise your boundary IQ. That's basically what we're doing so that you can up-level the satisfaction in your relationships, improve your, improve your communication skills, and just meet, be more empowered overall. So yesterday, um, Joanne said the replay was awesome. Thanks, Joanne. We were on fire yesterday, though, you guys, so much so that I went live on Instagram at five o'clock because there were so many good questions that I felt like I just needed to answer a few more. So I imagine I'll be doing the exact same thing today and probably the exact same thing tomorrow. So you can look for me live on IG at five o'clock today. Yesterday, we covered why boundaries, why now? Um, and there's so many good reasons why now. It's never a bad time to get better at it. We did two really revealing exercises. So if you haven't, you weren't here and you didn't watch the replay, please do. Both of these are in your workbook, which is what are you tolerating? And we took a resentment inventory to act as a GPS as to where we might want to start with boundaries. Um, this session is emotional boundaries. The struggle is real. And tomorrow we're handling boundary scripts and self care. So plenty more content to go. The workbook is beautiful. You can get it at, if you don't have it and you don't need it now for this, we took all the notes for you so that you could be present, right? Because I know you, I know you type airs. I know you ones who want to get everything. You have everything recording and we put it in the workbook for you. You can go to terrycole.com forward slash workbook. And the question I ask a lot before we get into it is, if not you, who? And if not now, when? And props to you for answering that question with yes, me, and yes, now, right? Because there's no time like the present to create a happier, healthier life. Today, I'm going to be teaching for 35 to 40 minutes. Then I'll be taking your questions. So again, if you have, if you have a question, and I see some of you are already doing it, please put some question marks in front of your question in the chat. Make sure it's to everyone so we can see it. And then Team TC will grab those questions and they can easily grab them because there's a lot of interaction in what we're gonna be doing today. So it's a lot for them to sift through. So I'm super psyched that you're here for Boundary Palooza, session two, emotional boundaries, the struggle is real. So I'm gonna say, why don't we do a quick grounding before we get into it? Mm -mm -mm -mm. This is one of my faves, you guys. I, I, I'm not an affiliate with these people, but I should be. I love this brand called Sage. It's a Canadian brand and this is stress release and dude, it smells so good. Wow, all right, so immediately, I feel more relaxed, immediately. So I love it if you would find something that does the same for you. Oh, Catherine said, I always stock up and I go back to Canada. Yes, they're so, it's just delicious. Mm, smells so good. So gently close your eyes. And I want you to drop your attention inward and put your hand on your heart. If you don't know where it is, right here, right in the middle of your chest. And let's just breathe. Breathing in through your nose and out through your nose. And I want you to relax your shoulders as you're exhaling. Relax your body. Dial into how you're feeling physically. Uncross your legs if they're crossed. Make sure you're comfortable however you're sitting. Just breathe. Breathing in through your nostrils and out through your nostrils can signal 
to the amygdala, the fear center of the brain, to sort of calm down, to slow down. It's doing something to the nervous system, that style of breathing. So when I'm trying to get into a centered state, I always have a tendency to breathe in and out of my nose. Now I'm going to bring your attention to your heart um, chakra, which is right here. I'm just going to breathe deeply three times, imagining that on the exhalation, anything that's blocking your heart chakra is leaving your body with your breath gently, easily. This gives you the opportunity to come to today's session with an open heart. Now I'm going to ask you to move your attention to right between your eyebrows and a little bit up your third eye chakra. We're going to do the same thing, breathing deeply three times. And on the exhalation, visualizing that anything that might be blocking your ability to see with clarity is leaving your body with your breath. Breathe again. One last time. giving you the ability to come to this session with an open mind, which is always a beginner's mind. Now let's take one collective deep breath. You can set your intention for today's session. As I said yesterday, honestly, mine is always the same. I set mine, which I did already before the session when I light my candle, which is that you will hear something, anything, that creates some kind of an aha moment for you, an epiphany and realization that will empower you, that will lessen your suffering and increase your joy. And now on the count of three, let's breathe deeply together. And if you can, exhale audibly with a sigh simply because it feels good. One, two, three. Ah. Gently open your eyes. Welcome back. All right. So we're going to get into the zone. I'm going to ask you some questions. And I want you to get your participation hat on. Make sure that you are, the drop down menu is to everyone. You're welcome, May. I feel refreshed. Can I tell you, someone said, you look refreshed. I literally feel it. Oh, breathing deeply is just, it's free, people. Just do it in your life. It's amazing. So I'm going to ask you to get into this zone in your brain of what we're going to be covering today. So a couple of questions. Do you often say yes when you'd really rather say no? Just write yes, or just write a why. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Someone said no. Most people are saying yes. Someone said ugh. <laughs> Not anymore. Sometimes, of course, sometimes. Yeah. I see you. Next question. Do you feel comfortable asking for help when you need it, whether it's emotional or practical? No, 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 no. Most people are saying no. I know. That's hard. Some people are saying yes, but I have to say the majority of you are saying no. I'm asking for help. Hyper-independence is a part of what we're going to talk about today. Uh, do you ever feel overwhelmed or drained by other people's emotions? Yes. Same. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, my God. You guys, look at the, look at the chat. It's on fire. We see what's happening. Yes, but getting better, some people are, yes. All right, I'm an empath, who's not? I'm an empath, I'm a sensitive person. I mean, I feel like you guys are my crew. Many of you are empaths and highly sensitive people. Another question, does your emotional state fluctuate easily? Meaning you could be in a great mood and your partner or your teenager comes home and they're in a pissy mood and suddenly your mood is kind of out the window and you can't, Fix their mood fast enough. Anybody? Yes, yes, <laughs> totally. 
such a drag, right? It's like being in the little boat and someone else's emotions are the big storm where you're like, I was fine until that happened. Yes, that's why I live alone, right? Um, all right, do you feel responsible for the circumstances or the feelings of other people? Anybody feel like you just got to fix that thing for them? Yes, some people say no, which is great, but honestly, most are saying yes. Yeah, someone has a problem. Who just wants to jump into auto fixing? Me, I still want to. I don't because I'm in recovery, but yes. Um, do you often, last two questions, because they were all so good, I couldn't pick between them. Do you often find yourself in chronic indecision? Anybody? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I feel that. Someone said, right. Someone just said, are you reading my mind? No, I just am you a decade later, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. And someone else said it sucks to be an empath. You know, hey, man, actually take boundary boot camp and you'll be super psyched about being an empath. That is your superpower, dude. You just don't know how to wrangle it yet, you know, but you can learn. Um, and the last question I have for you is when you have a choice to make, do you have a tendency to just ask everyone in the world what they think you should do? Anybody? Ooh, interesting. Probably half and half on that one. All right, you guys. So we're going to be, what we're talking about today sort of is going, is connected to all of those things, all of those questions and all of those conundrums, because that's what so many of them are. So why did I pick this as a topic? Well, I was teaching a boundary workshop and out of the five areas of boundaries that we have, physical, sexual, material, mental, and emotional, 97, I thought it was 96%, 97% of the people in attendance said they struggled most with emotional boundaries. So I was like, uh, it can't just be these people, right? If it's them, and it was so obvious that that was their biggest problem, that there's, I knew lots of other people in the world are struggling too. So um, what are emotional boundaries? And here's the thing, you guys, you have all this info in your workbook. So please be here now, right? You can be here now because I know you. So that's why we put it in the workbook so you didn't have to do it. Emotional boundaries, this makes up the invisible line between your emotions and your responsibilities and the emotions and responsibilities of other people in your life. So what happens when we have weak or disordered emotional boundaries? We take on other people's stuff, like it's yours, or you feel responsible for fixing their issues, right? It can also mean you feel guilty about other people's feelings, right? Especially if you think you've hurt someone else's feelings, or if someone is trying to guilt you into doing something, you're very susceptible to that, or if someone doesn't approve of what you're doing. Sabrina said, I feel so guilty for other people's feelings and I hate it. Yes, but here's the thing. That is a boundary issue, babe. And that you, you really can change that. When you learn this, what we're talking about today, you really get clear about what is your side of the street. So let's talk a little bit about what are some of the symptoms of having disordered emotional boundaries? Well, we talked about it a little bit in the question asking, but chronic indecision. So if you have a hard time making decisions or you ruminate about what you did or didn't do, right? You did, what did you, you did or didn't decide basically in the past, sort of second guessing, right? You might do copious amounts of research before making a decision. And listen, some research makes sense, but I find that with my therapy clients, the ones that have really disordered emotional boundaries can't make a decision. It's like they're trying so hard not to make a mistake that they're doing an incredible amount of research to be like, I'm, I want to make the right choice. You may have excessive worry about making mistakes like my clients, which inspires you to ask everyone around, as we were saying before, what they think you should do. Being in a chronic state of indecision is absolutely exhausting and can block you 
from taking action in your life. Because a lot of times, if we wait so long because we're doing all the research, hey, those decisions can end up getting made for us. Those opportunities can suddenly disappear. I mean, someone said, is, uh, uh, Lisa said, is it a form of perfectionism? Yeah, you know, it, it, it can fall into that category too. Um, but I find that when you have disordered emotional boundaries, which is basically perfectionism is also a symptom of it, you get stuck in this pattern of um, being so afraid to make the wrong thing. And what is that? Fear of rejection, fear of being ridiculed, fear of all the things. There's a million things to be afraid of. Um, another symptom is codependency. Now we could do, I could do a whole palooza on codependency, obviously. But for now, we're gonna we're gonna keep it to this. What does it mean to be codependent? Like, what does it actually mean? The way that I describe it, it means you are overly invested in the feeling states the outcomes, the circumstances, and the decisions of the people in your life to the detriment of your own internal peace. So you got that? You're overly invested in what other people are doing, what other people are deciding. And it's interrupting your internal peace. It could be your uh, well-being. It could be your financial well-being, where you're bailing people out. So how can you tell? And right now, we can do it, right? How can you tell if you are responding or reacting in a codependent way? Hold on, I gotta get more comfortable. How do you, how can you tell? I want you to check your urgency, right? If your friend, your best friend, you know, gets in touch with you and they have a problem, they're in a crisis, check your urgency. How quickly? Does it feel like that problem is yours right now? It becomes yours. How compulsively do you feel compelled to fix it? Right? That is a codependent response. When we cannot tolerate the way we're feeling about someone else having a problem, someone else being in pain, especially if it's someone that we're close to. But, you know, I was a pretty indiscriminate codependent. I got to be honest and say. It could be someone I just friggin' met. And I would feel compelled to do something. Um, hold on. Okay, we'll, we'll, get, we'll grab that question from David later. Um, all right, so this is a simple tool that I'm going to give you that I'm not kidding could literally actually change your life if you can implement this. So... Another disordered emotional boundary or codependent red flag. Every time you think, I don't want them to think, when you think that in your mind, or I don't want them to feel, I want you to take note because you've suddenly trampled on someone else's side of the street. This is an indication that you need to get the heck back onto your own side of the street because what they think and how they feel is their side of the street. So make a note. How often do you think? I don't want them to think. I don't want them to feel. That is an indication for you. Stop. Right. Stop right now. <laughs> and step it on back. And another indication of disordered emotional boundaries is auto advice giving. And how often, how many of you just put a why or say yes, if you kind of can't stop yourself, that do you immediately go to, I have an idea, I have a thought, I know a person, I'll make it, I'll make a, a call, I'll, I'll set you up by email, I'll, 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 uh. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. yes, all right, it's, yep. It's, it's all, it's so many of you. It's so many, all of you participating, it's you. And hi, how do I know it so well? It was me. So I do understand. But immediately do, starting to dole out advice about what someone should do when they're discussion, discussing an issue, even if they haven't asked you for the input, that's an indication of disordered emotional boundaries. So take note. Um, 
So if we were thinking about just quickly, what is the antidote to auto advice giving? It would be to learn to ask expansive questions. Right? Instead of jumping in with auto advice, auto fixing, learn to pause. Right? Because that pause is pregnant with possibility where you actually could support that person and have their problem be centered on them. Exactly. Becca said to get curious. Yes. And it's, it's a gift to create this expansion, right? You res you're respecting the other person's autonomy by saying, tell me more about that, right? So the next time someone comes to you with a problem, instead of the auto advice giving, you can try out, hey, what does your gut instinct say? How do you feel about it? What do you think you should do? I'll always say, you know, because if it's someone else's life, their gut instinct is the one that actually matters. And them, they're coming to you and ask, even if, they're, if they are asking, I still don't give my opinion until way long into this conversation. Because as an actual friend, I, I know I don't have their answers just because what I would do and because I do know a lot and I am a know-it-all to a degree, you know, but I don't know what they should do because their life is their life. Their life journey and path is theirs. I don't know. And neither do you, <laughs> even though we think we do. So what does your gut instinct say? How do you feel about it? Sometimes my uh, clients will say, or kids will say, I don't know the answer. And I'll say, but if you did know, what would it be? Sometimes that's an intervention that could kind of hit the unconscious part of their mind that might have an idea, but they're too afraid. But once you ask those questions, then you have to be silent. Then you have to wait. Allow, right? Allow the space. The more you do it, the easier it gets to do. But we really have to anchor ourselves in the truth that we actually do not know more than someone else, what they should do in life. We actually don't. And so all of this is, these are questions to be supportive without overstepping boundaries or compromising someone else's um, sovereignty. All right, we're also going to be talking about scripts uh, tomorrow. So we're, we're going to revisit this with a little bit of scripts, what to say when someone overshares and, you know, there's a whole bunch of scripts that we'll have, but this alone, if you can take this nugget with you, remember it, this can change your life. It will certainly change your relational patterns. All right, let's talk about another part of disordered emotional boundaries is emotional reactivity, right? So what does it mean when we're emotionally reactive? That we don't have space between when something happens and when our emotions take over. It's almost like getting run over by a bus of your own emotions. So when that happens, we don't have a moment to ponder, right? It's actually literally the definition of a knee-jerk reaction. So what's really happening in these situations is that we get into fight, flight, freeze mode. So we're having a physiological, biological response. Yes, Natalie said, my inner dragon is unleashed. Yes, it means you're feeling threatened. So what does it look like in actual behavior? What are we doing? Uh, we can attack, we can blame, we can name call, we can analyze. We can pursue and yell, right? They're trying to sort of get away and we're kind of going at them. We can withdraw, we can isolate, we can stonewall, we can deny, we can get numb, you know, doing numbing activities, drinking, TV, sugar. We can defend, we can avoid, right? 
here's the thing with emotional reactivity, though. Obviously, we know it isn't great. Yes, we can fawn as well, Jenny said, where you're now fawning is where you're starting to sort of suck up to or praise or um, what's a good way to describe fawning? It's, it's like feeding the ego of the other person because you're feeling, yeah, kissing up is right. People pleasing, feeding the ego. Exactly. Appease. That's a good one, Sabrina. Yep. Smooth over. Right. Doing it all out of fear. Exactly. But why don't we want to do this? Because it blocks actual problem solving and create can create a lot of unfinished business in our relationships. So we need to have a certain amount of emotional regulation skills. Why? Because everything isn't a five alarm emergency. And yet it can feel that way to us, especially if we're conflict avoidant, if we're confrontation avoidant, right? When you have emo disordered emotional boundaries, it can feel like everything is life or death because you might always be in this primal survival mode. So being in a perpetual state of this emotional reactivity is just friggin' exhausting. Anybody? I mean, are you tired from it? Because it's incredible. It does. It sucks. I'm currently in a pickle with my daughter and it sucks. Yes. Hypervigilance. Correct, Catherine. It's so tiring. Right? So let's bring this back to you quickly. Think about who pushes your emotional trigger buttons. Can you identify? So someone just said my sister. I see that. Someone said everyone. Someone said family. My mom, sister, family, husband, boyfriend, daughter, adult children, mom and best friend, mama, <laughs> siblings, husband. Yes, boyfriend. Knowing it is the beginning to changing it. Um, another thing to think about with, with disordered emotional boundaries is overfunctioning. <sighs> Would any of you feel like you might be an overfunctioner? Anybody where you might be taking on more responsibility than is yours? This can look like doing things for others that they can and should be doing for themselves, which of course also describes codependent behavior. It's volunteering and doing the things. A lot of times we're doing shit that people are literally not even asking us to do. Anybody? Anybody just doing stuff of their own accord? No one's even asking. Yeah. Yes, it's a compulsion. You know, part of this compulsion is to provide value and to sort of secure your own worthiness by doing. It's almost this feeling. I used to be this way in my 20s where, especially with love relationships, where it's like I felt like I certainly had a worthiness issue because I felt like I had to be utilitarian, right? I had to be adding value, doing something for that person, going above and beyond all the time, but it wasn't from love, it was from fear, which so much of this, when we talk about disordered emotional boundaries, because what ends up happening when we overfunction is that eventually we end up bitter, right? We're angry, we're pissed off, feeling like someone else is taking advantage of us even if we're volunteering to do all this crap. I blamed everyone. I was talking about a little bit yesterday where I just felt like they were, who raised them? They're so friggin' entitled, you know? The thing with overfunctioning though, is that even if people are grateful, here's the thing, they can never be grateful enough because we're not doing it from a healthy place where regular normal gratitude will fill it. We're expecting them to fill a place in us that only our own self-regard is going to fill, that only self-love will fill, that only having real self-esteem will fill. So we're always left kind of wanting, even if they're grateful. I'm still pissed, or I used to be, right? They're grateful, and I'm like, yeah, but not really. They don't realize what I sacrificed to do it, you know? even though they didn't freaking ask me to. Really, you're driven by fear of rejection. We're driven by fear of abandonment. You know? 
So when your emotional boundaries are disordered, overfunctioning can feel less like a choice and more like a compulsion. Ooh, Carol just had an aha moment. I love it. Yep. This can negatively though, impact this compulsive behavior really takes a toll on our relationships because we do end up in the position of giving from an empty bucket. So it's that much harder and we're pissed because we feel like they, it's them, it's not us, you know? All right, so we're gonna do an exercise together right now. Um, we're gonna have one to two minutes to write it out. So I want you to raise your awareness by taking an over-functioning inventory so you can get specific about what relationships in your life need your attention. So we're raising awareness though, you guys, without judgment, right? Deepak talks about when you can become the observer of your own behavior without judgment, that's like one of the highest forms of your own evolution. So let's not judge. I want you to think about just one relationship where you might be over-functioning right now. It could be at work. It could be family. We're not going to do minor children because that's a whole more complicated thing. So don't pick a kid under 18, but anyone else is fine. And these are the three questions you're going to answer. And I'm going to put a little bit of time. Um, I'm going to watch the clock for us. You're going to name the individual for whom you're over-functioning what you're doing for them that they can and really should be doing for themselves, right? And number three is what you're doing that is not your responsibility. Those two are similar, but different. So just spend a few minutes right now. I'm just gonna give you two um, and share with us who it is and what you're doing. Yeah, they're, they're, they just dropped it. And I can pin it. I think I can pin that. See if I can. Nope, I can't. So you guys, uh, it's right here in the chat. Name the person you're over-functioning for. What are you doing that they should really be doing for themselves? What are you doing that's not your responsibility? Okay. Hannah's already sharing. Don't worry. We're going to write and then we're going to share. Or, or you guys can share right now if you want to. But I want you to actually take a minute to who and what you're doing is basically what we're talking about. Uh, Bev said, what if the person is an elder and needs more help? That's okay. Are you helping them appropriately? Because if you are, then you're not over-functioning. If you're doing more for them because they're older, but they could really be doing it for themselves, then they go in that category. All right, I'm gonna give you one more minute. I'm going to start reading from the chat. All right, I'm going to start reading some so you can stop journaling or just add here. There's so many good ones. Oh, my God. Wow. Elizabeth said, aha moment. Sometimes I do it because that way I know it's done the way I want it done. Control freak, LOL. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, Elizabeth. Oh, yes. Not uncommon. Um, Anita said, my brother-in-law taking care of his finances and helping him stay afloat. Um, paying for his meals every single time. Yeah, Vera said it just didn't happen. She was busy and kept saying no to potential dates. Okay, I'm not sure. All right. Does emotional labor count? Yes, it does. We do a whole thing in the course on emotional labor. It counts so much. It's so important, which is the invisible, unpaid labor that we do just to run a family, right? 
Um, Rebecca said, husband propping up emotionally, seeking solutions to his problems that he then doesn't incorporate, feeding his ego instead of letting him build up his own self-esteem. Yeah, that's a lot of codependency there, Rebecca. I feel you. All right. Um, Lorraine said, moved across the country to help my daughter with children, with childcare. Three months turned into eight months of help with the baby finances, emotional issues. Yeah, that's a lot. And, and it doesn't, even when someone's grateful, it doesn't feel grateful enough, right? Yep. Uh, um, Cecile said, co-worker, doing their work or spoon feeding them how to do their work, doing the work correctly. Yep. And again, they get credit for doing it, even though you're kind of doing it, you know? That's hard, right? Yep. Yeah, and Katya was saying I overfunctioned for my company, but I don't. I want to avoid um, feeling not good enough, right? So part of it is a fear: is that if you don't overfunction, then you're going to fail. Um, Jandy said, "Dad, his only friend therapist, shoulder to cry on, financial advisor, health consultant. Generally, I'm asked to parent him, someone to pity him for all of the hardship he has endured. However, he got." here as a grown adult yeah that's hard and and here's the thing when we have disordered emotional boundaries you guys we are so dialed into what the other person wants and expects from us that it's hard to choose our own this is where the self-abandonment piece comes in with disordered emotional boundaries where we know what they want and it's so hard to not give it because we know it's going to be received negatively. And yet, not doing it, right? This is creating the war, that war within yourself. Offering rides to others who have it covered on their own, Ariel said. So, uh, Farah said, you know, first date, someone just talked about themselves, like literally never said one word, never asked one question. And again, we're letting those people lead rather than asserting, right? And you can learn to assert yourself. But I want you guys to see, first of all, how not alone you are in this process. Because every one of you have shared beautiful, relevant places in your life where you just identified where you were overfunctioning. You know this. You know? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to ask, uh, we talk about making decisions or choosing to do things from a place of guilt or shame at some point. Sure. How about now is a good time because a lot of the overfunctioning we're doing is based on guilt and shame. And this requires us to really dial in and stay on our own side of the street. And when you've been conditioned since birth, right, what we talked about yesterday is where do these boundary patterns come from? We were taught, we were raised and praised to be self-abandoning codependents, as I love to say, sad but true. So you learned this. So what we're talking about is you learning something else. And you can, that's the whole point of Boundary Palooza, that's the whole point of Boundary Bootcamp, the course, is to teach you a new way of doing it. But it's more, it's going to be more than, you know, it takes a teeny more than one hour, two hours, three hours, right? That's why the course itself is eight weeks. Because we are unlearning before we relearn. We learn something new. And we have to honor what we experienced and what we learned in childhood. Because you are this way, sassy cat, and all of you, for a good reason. It's what you learned. We're dutiful. We were taught to be good girls and boys. And we want to be that. And yet we need to separate what that means because we can't quote unquote be that. It's not what other people think is being a good girl or boy because that's what that implies is that others will perceive us as being good. We need to create this for our own. Yeah, Ray said domesticated, exactly. But you know, the world isn't changed by domesticated humans, right? Our most vibrant lives are not lived 
by quote unquote domesticated humans. It's got to be that we are learning something new that actually honors how we feel, what we want. You know? Um, all right, Sabrina's question. How do I maintain strong emotional boundaries around my family who always doesn't always understand the concept of emotional boundaries? Here's the amazing thing, Sabrina. They don't need to understand the concept. You can still create healthy emotional boundaries yourself. It's all about your behavior. So will they notice if you are not interacting with them codependently? Emotionally, yeah, I'm pretty sure they will. And that's okay. They may say, I think you don't care. Of course I do. I love you. And I have no doubt that you're going to figure out what to do because you're the only one who can. Well, why aren't you doing that for me? Because it's not mine to do. But I love you and I have faith in you, right? There's all of these ways, and we're going to talk about some of this tomorrow when we get to the scripts. But again, we always start, and the way that we start in the course itself, which again, starts on the 24th. If you're interested in that, go to terrycole.com forward slash boundary bootcamp 2023. We start, the first pillar of transformation is awareness and how you are in the world and in your relationships. So much of the time we've been doing it, we're so habituated into this behavior, we're not even aware of what we're doing. We're actually not. And we're upset that they're upset or we're upset that we can't fix it, but we're not even cognizant of what we're doing and where we are overstepping our own boundaries. So boundaries with self is a big part of the beginning of the um, course itself because we need to understand what they are. All right, Josephine said, if you do ask expensive questions, but your gut instinct is always to want to help others, is that still codependency? You never want others to feel pain. Josephine, listen, can I tell you, I still feel the same way. When we change our behavior to healthier behavior, my gut instinct, when I see someone I love in pain, is still to immediately want to fix it. <laughs> but because I do not have disordered emotional boundaries anymore. I don't take that action. I ask, um, I ask the questions. I ask expansive questions. I support them, right? Yes, exactly, Jenny. Reprogramming ourselves is crucial, she said, and that's, it's a fact. So what I'm saying, though, is that even if your instinct may stay the same, I'm never going to want to see anyone in pain not people I know, not people I don't know, right? That's just, as an empath, this is just, we don't want anyone to be in pain. That's just how we are in the world. So, no. The point is, you can not be codependent and still have that feeling. You can still have the desire, but the difference is, as you do this work over time, it is a desire and not a compulsion because you actually have the power to not take that action, right? What do we do when you become a boundary boss is that you are creating choices in your life, behavioral choices, things that you can do differently. Linda asks, what needs to heal inside of me as an antidote to overfunctioning? You have to feel like you are enough. It's a worthiness thing where we don't have to be overgiving and overfunctioning to others, that you are worthy simply by virtue of being alive. It's not required. You're worthy because of who you are, not because of what you do for others. So again, you've really got to question that and look again, observe your desire to overfunction when you feel it in the moment without judgment. Susan said, What if you are afraid of losing love? Of course, you are. We all are. That is the most normal fear of rejection. What is fear of rejection? Fear of losing love. 
It's very normal. But the way that I teach it to you, we take baby steps along the way. So we're not going to be like ripping out that bullhorn and being like, hey, everybody, it's all going to change. Uh, strap in, get prepared. I'm not doing anything for you anymore. That's not how we do it. We do baby steps. And it all starts with um, observing ourselves and understanding, doing these inventories. And we do a lot of this in the course itself, where you're, you really have to understand your pain points. What is causing you pain in your relationships? Because when we can identify those, again, that's why we did, and if you didn't do the resentment inventory and the what you're tolerating exercise from yesterday, please do, because it's really helpful. This exactly, Lisa said, pain points is a great concept. It is because it tells us what needs our attention, because there's so many places we could start. So why don't we start with the thing that's causing us distress? That makes sense. Um, Alba said, if you are codependent with one person, does that mean you are codependent in general with others as well? Well, really, only you can answer that. I will not say that if you are codependent in your romantic relationship, that means you're codependent at work. Because everyone is different. For some people, it's everywhere. For other people, it's mostly romantic relationships. For some people, it has to do with power uh, difference right? It's with authority figures that they feel this way. So again, this is where doing a deep dive, which we do in the course, to your downloaded boundary blueprint, that's where that stuff gets revealed, is understanding how your childhood, how your upbringing, how your culture, how your family of origin influenced your codependency. Um, that, again, gives us a place, first of all, a much deeper understanding of self which is so important, but it gives us a place to start, right? The boundary blueprint is really key. Um, all right, Patty said, what are some ways of identifying and maintaining being supporting of a friend's feelings while maintaining personal emotional safety? Well, there has to be limits, you know? There has to be limits. So you can step back. If it's a friend who's in a toxic situation, where they're telling you about that toxic situation all the time, but they're taking no action to change it. That's something where you're going to need to step back from that friendship because it's very pain inducing for empaths and for, you know, we love people when they're in, you know, situations. But before, you know, Lisa said that friend, you know, got, got to let go. I, I don't know, because here's the thing. I feel like people always ask me questions about friendships, either toxic friendships or when I'm doing speaking gigs, I can't tell you the number of women who approach me and say, I have a friendship that I just have to get out of. I have to break up with this friend. I have to, because they've waited so long to tell the truth to the friend. And I'll always ask, hey, do, have you had a conversation? And I want to say, honestly, 98% of the time, they're like, oh no, I can't do that. I'm like, Okay, so you'd rather just ghost the person or write a Dear John letter or Dear Joni letter than having the conversation. So I think stepping back and saying, hey, you can tell the truth. And again, we'll cover this tomorrow with scripts, but you can tell the truth. Hey, you and I have talked for many, 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 many hours about you and Bob. And I find it so distressing to hear about the abuse. So I'm gonna ask you to not talk to me about it. I'm here. I love you. If you want to change your situation, you know, I'm in your front row, but it is so distressing for me to, to hear about it, that I have to ask you to stop telling me because it's so frustrating and painful. That person might be like, I can't believe you're making my abuse about you. No, it's, it's our job to protect ourselves emotionally. This is what emotional boundaries are all about. All right. Here's the last question I'm taking. And then you can join me at five o'clock. I will answer some more on Instagram. Um, there, are, there are ways to rewire our neural pathways to know we are worthy, enough, lovable. Terry, do you teach these? I mean, I don't know if I would say in that exact way, but how you rewire neural pathways is through repetition. It's through new thought patterns and new behaviors. So I guess I do teach you, Devana, because... 
in the course itself, we talk about what are the actions that we're taking that are going to support what we want rather than sabotage what we want. And then we have to be mindful enough to keep repeating them until the, until they become the new normal, but they do. So to sign up for the course, someone just asked Krista, go to terrycole.com forward slash BB 2023, I think, or someone from my team will put it in. We had a bunch of different things. Is that correct? Yes. I don't have Instagram. Is there another way to access the Q&A? Yes, I think that my team is going to drop it on the, the page you do have access to. Um, Woohoo. All right, you guys, I hope that I answered all your questions. Um, quick recap is I hope that you guys enjoyed this. I hope that you did it add value to your life. Let me know. Yes, did it? Because that's, oh, yes, great. Excellent. I love it. And I hope you understand why the second topic was about emotional boundaries, because there's so much meat to cover. So today we raised our awareness of emotional boundaries where you might get stuck, chronic indecision, codependency, auto advice, giving emotional reactivity and overfunctioning. right? That's what we covered. And when you have good emotional boundaries, what can you do, people? Express your emotions, thoughts, feelings, needs assertively and honestly. Be a good listener. Say no and set limits not overextend yourself, separate your emotions from the emotions of other people, and you have more awareness with healthy emotional boundaries. You have more awareness of your own preferences, desires, limits, deal breakers, and emotions. So it was so much fun. Like I could talk about this stuff for days. Like this is my fave, fave, fave. I'm writing a book right now on codependency. And I so appreciate you being here with me live because you could be doing so many other things. So remember, you are not alone. We're all in this together, this loving, beautiful, amazing group in this sacred container that we are creating in Boundary Palooza. You are also not fragile. You can handle a little discomfort. It's all gonna be okay. And here's the thing, no matter where you are, no matter what you discovered about yourself, you can learn this. So one last question for you to do, which is, did you have an aha moment? Share it in the chat. What did you realize today about yourself? Is there anything? You know, or you can just say yes, that you had an aha moment, but I want to know what, yes, okay. I feel like I've made so much progress. I felt normal. Excellent. I've got some work to do. I can change with a new skill set. Yes. I need help with my boundaries. Yes, you do. That's why I'm here. So really, yes, I love it. And are these the things that resonated with you today? You can also just share that. You're getting better. I've got work to do. Yes, yes, yes. Still have work to do. That's okay. Listen, we're all works in progress, you know? All right, beautiful. So I'm going to issue you a challenge to do the exercises in the workbook. Just carve out 10 minutes, right? And besides the exercises, I want you to listen to the 10 minute gentle boundary guided meditation that I created from my heart to yours, please. And in the actual um, landing page where we have everything where you guys are, I want you to put any aha moments or questions or comments right under today's live video. And please, I love it. You guys, yesterday, some people were sharing. It was so amazing. Totally made my day. So I loved seeing what you were posting. Please keep doing it. Tag me in everything. You can use BB2023 and Boundary Palooza as the hashtags. But it just made me so incredibly happy. So make sure you tag me so that I can see them. And the next live workshop is happening tomorrow at 12 noon. Same place, same time. I will be sending you an email reminder. Um, about what we're doing tomorrow is boundary scripts and self-care. Super excited. And I will see you later today. If you want to join me, because some of your other questions, I still want to answer on Instagram live today at 5 p.m. Eastern. I will see you guys later. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I will see you tomorrow for boundary scripts and self-care. Thank you guys. I love you.